Hi there, Simon from SimonWood.com. Uh, I have uh, three Vigna Verdes in front of me, all from the same uh, sort of, um, not quite the same winery, but the same organisation. Uh, there's, uh, I think there's a couple of estates, one's called Casa de Pacos, uh, or Quinta de Pacos, I think, and the other one's Casa do Capital Moor. Um, anyway, Vigna Verde, some of them have got, uh, some of them are all Alvarino, some of them are just a little dollop of Alvarino. So we'll start off with the one that's got uh, the most great varieties in, which is the Casa de Pacos 2015 Superior, uh, made from Alvarino, Arinto, Lurero and uh, Fernel Pires, weighing in at 12.5% uh, alcohol. I've got a feeling that um, none of these have seen any, any oak, but this one says partial skin maceration, so it might have a little bit of colour, it might... Uh, have, uh, I don't think it's going to, I'm not expecting loads of tannin or certainly not orange wine territory with uh, maceration, but I think they're just talking a, a couple of hours to add a little bit of um, grunt and fatness. Got that classic um, ripe apple, but ripe fresh apple, not one of those ripe woolly apples, uh, and a little bit of a salty briny bite. Uh, well, can you have a smell? Can you smell a briny bite? Briny aroma, let's just put it at that. And um, uh, there's a little touch of lemon in there, and there's a like, slight floral, um, almost nutty character as well. It, fe it feels like there's a, a fresh bit and something that's uh, uh, maybe getting just a little bit slight, slightly richer. Once upon a time, this was the, the, this was the time when people would be going, "Oh, come on, roll on the 2016," because we're in, we're in the end of September 2016 here, and uh, uh, the the Vigna Verde uh, will have been made. It'll probably be bubbling away. Might even have finished its fermentation by now. Uh, and uh, get it on the market as quickly as possible. But uh, the Alvarino, sorry, the um, Vigna Verde's being made now. A little bit more um, body and guts to them. Uh, yeah, this is 12.5%. Some of them you'll find uh, still under 10%, but this feels like it's got the substance to keep going for another few, uh, uh, few months yet, maybe even a year or two. And that's really nice, crisp, friendly, um, uh, but then when you think it's going to go quite weighty and um, that rich ripe apple, then there's that backbone of um, uh, stealing minerality, if you want to call it that. Something in there that's uh, that's making you think, uh, yes, I'd really like to uh, uh, sit down with a plate of shellfish. Actually, there's most times of the year when I'd like to sit down with a plate of shellfish. Uh, maybe not with a massive Amarone or something like that, but um, I wouldn't say no to a good plate of shellfish most times of the uh, year stroke day. Shove the cork back in there and uh, do the next one, uh, which is Morgado uh, de Perdigal. Uh, this one, uh, Quinta de Pacos, as opposed to the first one, which is Casa de Pacos. Um, and I don't know whether that means the first one's got some bought-in fruit and this one's got uh, uh, all estate fruit. Uh, uh, just two grapes here, Alvarino and Lorero. Again, 2015 vintage and... Uh, um, yeah, 12.5%. Uh, Anything about barrels? No, 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 no. Um, no. Just a little bit of time on the lees and uh, boras finas. I'm hoping that's fine lees, but if it's not, uh, well, my Portuguese friends will uh, get me and slap my wrists. Anyway, the wine. There's that fatter, slightly uh, aromatic character of, um, of ripe Alvarino here. Um, and it's got more of a, yeah, more of a peachy weight. Maybe the first one was uh, majoring on that uh, green apple. There's still some of that apple-y character here. Uh, but there's this um, other, uh, yeah, richer peachy, uh, maybe a little bit more nut kernel in there. Really tasty wine. Fat, but thin, if that makes sense. So there's these fat, juicy, peachy flavours. And then... Um, that some of that crisp minerally note and um, that fresh apple acidity that was in the first one uh, to rein it all in. Um, juicy, it's got, it's got me going in need of even more shellfish. Uh, Dear me, actually, yeah, you might have seen from the camera that uh, I don't know if it's uh, what, what that this is going to look like when it, it, it gets processed, but uh, uh, the sun, it, it, I started filming and it was uh, slightly cloudy outside, but the sun has come out, and uh, the, yeah, this is the sort of one I would like to. Uh, sit at a seaside cafe and sup with some lovely shellfish. Very tasty. Final one. Uh, so this is a Casa do Capital Moor, um, and it's a Alvarino Reserva 2015 from uh, uh, Moncal Meliaco. Um, have they got? Uh, yeah. No, again, no time on uh, no, nothing in barrel, but it has a long period. Uh, in the lees with steering, I think they mean stirring, but uh, I quite like the idea of a wine being steered from one 
one side of the wine cellar to the other. But uh, anyway, let's see what whether this is steerage class or high class. Fatter, richer, dumber. Sounds like an MP, really, doesn't it? Um, but um, it, it feels that there is that peachy weight that you got in the uh, uh, in the previous one, but more of it. Uh, and I think uh, it feels, I, I don't know when it, when it was bottled in comparison with the other two, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had, uh, if, if it's been bottled far more recently. And whereas the other two are in there, hello, here I am, I'm lovely, at my, I'm at my best, excuse me, I'm at my best now. This feels like uh, it's still doing some uncurling, so I'll try and, try and get it to uncurl in the glass. Again, that mixture of uh, richness and finesse. Um, so there's the peachy nut kernel, classic Albarino, Albarino, if you're on the Spanish side of the border. Um, uh, but then I, I, people say, what's the difference between Albarino and Albarino, um, the, the Portuguese and the Spanish versions? Uh, sometimes I, I pick up a slightly saltier tang in the, uh, uh, in, in the ones uh, from the Portuguese side of the border, but um, it's a very broad rule of thumb. It's, I suppose it's like... Uh, uh, what's the difference between Sancerre and Puy Fume? You get, there are some that are more son, Puy Fumes that are more Sancerre-like and vice versa. And, uh, it's very easy to get yourself confused. And I would be lying if uh, I'd said that uh, you could put them both in front of me and I'd be able to tell which side of the border they came from. What I do know is that this, is, uh, this feels like it's got weight but freshness. And um, yeah, it's still opening up. I mean, we're in the end of September now. I really like to have uh, tuck into this with uh, on Boxing Day. Uh, I think about like yeah, having having some with the, all the leftovers from Christmas Day, cold sausages, bits of ham, uh, that thing where you, uh, you you use sausages as a lolly. I mean, you, it can, and if you stand on one leg uh, and hold your hand in the air, they have no calories. Uh, but I'd, I'd love to uh, sit and have it with that type of ever so slightly savoury, salty food. Um, I, I wouldn't mind it with. Um, Maybe even with my, my Christmas dinner, but uh, I, I I think of something. It feels like a more of a uh, if if you're going to have it in winter, it's a lunchtime wine rather than a, an evening wine. Evening, maybe you want something that's a little bit more weighty and oaky. But uh, this packs quite a punch in terms of flavour. But it's one of those that's genuinely medium-bodied, full-flavoured. Uh, a lot of wines get it the other way around and miss out. But um, this is terrific. Actually, all of them have been pretty terrific. Um, I'm very impressed by them. Um, so um, keep an eye out for, for these and uh, yeah, I mean Vineyard Verde, it's a wine region on the up and uh, estates like this are leading the way. See you soon.